my dear brothers and sisters. Today, I want to speak to you from the depth of my heart about something very important. It's something that I believe each and every one of us needs to hear right now. You see, life has a way of closing doors on us. Sometimes those doors slam shut so hard that it feels like there's no way forward. But I want you to know that even when one door closes, God has already planned to open a new door for you. A door that will lead you to a new chapter in your life. Now, I know that many of you might be feeling stuck trapped in a situation that seems impossible to get out of. Maybe you've been praying for a change, for a breakthrough, for something to happen that will move you forward. And maybe, just maybe, you're beginning to lose hope because that door hasn't opened yet. But I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Don't lose heart. God is working behind the scenes and he is about to open a door for you that will lead you into a new chapter. A chapter filled with hope, with peace, and with the fulfillment of the dreams he has placed in your heart. Imagine for a moment that you are standing in front of a massive door. It's a door that has been closed for so long that you've almost forgotten what it feels like to step through it. You've been standing there, waiting, hoping, praying, but nothing seems to be happening. It's easy to feel discouraged in times like these. It's easy to start thinking that maybe that door will never open. But let me tell you, God's timing is perfect. When he opens a door, it's not just any door. It's the right door. It's the door that will lead you exactly where you need to go. You see, God doesn't just open doors randomly. He opens doors that are meant for you. Doors that will bring you closer to your purpose. Doors that will allow you to step into the fullness of what He has planned for you. But sometimes, we have to be patient. Sometimes, we have to wait for that perfect moment when everything aligns according to His plan. I want you to think about the possibilities that lie beyond that door. What if, just on the other side of it, there's a whole new beginning waiting for you? A new job, a new relationship, a new opportunity that you've been dreaming about. What if, beyond that door, there's a place where your heart's deepest desires can finally come true? What if, on the other side, there's a chapter in your life where you finally find the peace and happiness you've been searching for. But here's the thing, my friends. Sometimes, the door doesn't look like what we expected. Sometimes, it's not the grand entrance we were hoping for. It might be small, it might be humble, it might even be a little scary. But don't let that stop you. Don't be afraid to walk through it. Because what's important is not how the door looks, but what lies beyond it. And let me assure you, what lies beyond it is something wonderful. Something that will change your life in ways you can't even imagine right now. So, how do we prepare for this new chapter? How do we get ready to step through that door when it finally opens? First, we need to trust God completely. We need to believe that He knows what's best for us. Even when we don't understand why things are happening the way they are, trust isn't always easy, especially when we've been hurt, when we face disappointment after disappointment. But trust is what keeps us going. Trust is what helps us to stand firm, even when everything around us is shaking. Second, we need to let go of the past. The past can be a heavy burden, can't it? It can weigh us down and keep us from moving forward. But if we're going to step into a new chapter, we need to be willing to let go of what's behind us. That means letting go of old hurts, old failures, and old regrets. It means forgiving those who have hurt us and forgiving ourselves for the mistakes we've made. It means freeing ourselves from the chains that are holding us back so that we can walk freely into the future that God has prepared for us. 
And third, we need to be ready to act when that door opens. Sometimes the door opens, but we're too scared to walk through it. We're afraid of the unknown, afraid of what might happen if we take that step. But I want to encourage you today. Don't be afraid. When God opens a door for you, He will also give you the strength and the courage to walk through it. He will guide your steps and be with you every step of the way. So when that door opens, be bold. Take that step of faith and trust that God will not only lead you through it, but will also bless you in ways you never thought possible. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to hold on to this promise. God will open a door for you to a new chapter. It may not happen in the way you expect, and it may not happen when you want it to, but it will happen in God's perfect timing. And when it does, it will be a door that leads to blessings, to joy, and to the fulfillment of the dreams that God has placed in your heart. My friends, I want to remind you of something very important. The process of stepping into a new chapter in your life isn't always smooth or easy. In fact, sometimes it feels like a struggle. But let me tell you, every bit of that struggle is part of God's plan to prepare you for the great things He has in store for you. Yes, the waiting, the challenges, the moments of doubt, they all serve a purpose. They are molding you, shaping you, and getting you ready for that new chapter. You see, before God opens that door to your new chapter, He often has to close some other doors in your life. And let's be honest, that can be painful. We've all experienced those moments when something we thought was good for us suddenly comes to an end. Maybe it's a job you loved, a relationship you cherished, or a plan you had your heart set on. When those doors close, it can feel like the end of the world. It can leave you feeling lost, wondering why things didn't work out the way you hoped. But here's the truth. Sometimes God closes a door because He knows it's not the right one for you. He sees what you cannot see. He knows what lies ahead, and He understands the dangers or the disappointments that could come from walking through the wrong door. So, when He closes a door, it's not to punish you but to protect you. It's because He has something better in store, a door that will lead you to a chapter in your life that is filled with greater joy, greater purpose, and greater blessings. It's hard to see this in the moment, isn't it? When you're standing in front of a closed door, it's easy to feel abandoned, to think that God has forgotten you. But I want to encourage you to change your perspective instead of focusing on the door that is closed. Start looking forward to the door that God is preparing to open for you. Because I promise you, that new door will lead you to a place of greater fulfillment and joy than you could ever imagine. Now, as we move forward, I want you to take a moment and think about the things in your life that you might need to let go of. What are the closed doors that you've been holding on to? What are the past hurts, the disappointments, the fears that have been keeping you from moving forward? It's time to release them. It's time to release them. It's time to trust that God is in control, that He is leading you to something better. And let me tell you, this process of letting go isn't just about releasing the pain or the disappointment. It's also about making room for the new blessings that God wants to bring into your life. Imagine trying to carry a heavy bag full of old, useless items while trying to pick up something new and beautiful. It's almost impossible, isn't it? You can't carry both. You have to let go of the old to make space for the new. And that's exactly what God is asking you to do right now. He's asking you to trust Him enough to let go of what's behind you so that He can fill your life with the new and wonderful things He has planned. My dear friends, 
when God opens that door to a new chapter in your life, it's not going to be a small change. It's going to be a transformation. It's going to be a shift that takes you from where you are now to where you're meant to be. But this transformation requires your cooperation. It requires your willingness to step out in faith, even when you don't know exactly where that door will lead. I know that stepping into the unknown can be frightening. It's natural to want to stay where you feel safe and comfortable. But comfort zones are not where growth happens. Comfort zones are not where new chapters are written. If you want to experience the fullness of God's plan for your life, you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. You have to trust that God is guiding your steps, that He is with you every step of the way, and that He will never lead you into a place where His grace cannot sustain you. And let's talk about that grace for a moment. God's grace is what empowers you to take that step into the new chapter. It's what gives you the strength to face the challenges that come with change. It's what reassures you when you're feeling uncertain or afraid. And the beautiful thing about God's grace is that it is always available to you, no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult the transition may seem. God's grace is there to support you, to lift you up, and to carry you through. So, as you prepare to step into this new chapter, I want you to remember that you are not alone. God is with you. His grace is with you. And He is going to walk with you through every moment of this journey. There may be times when you feel overwhelmed, when you're tempted to turn back to the familiar, to what feels safe. But I encourage you to keep moving forward. Keep trusting. Keep believing that God's plan for your life is good and that the new chapter He's leading you into is filled with blessings and opportunities that you can't even begin to imagine. Beloved, we must talk about a key ingredient that is so crucial but often so difficult. Patience. I know, patience is not easy. Waiting on God can be one of the hardest things to do, especially when you're eager for change, desperate for a breakthrough, or tired of the struggles. But let me tell you, patience is not just about waiting. It's about waiting with trust, waiting with hope, and waiting with a confidence that God is working, even when you can't see it. Being patient means trusting God's timing, not just His plan. Sometimes we think we're ready for the next chapter, but God knows there are still things He needs to work on in us before we can step into that new season. God is nurturing you, preparing you and making sure that when He opens that door, you are fully ready to walk through it and thrive in your new chapter. Now, I know it's easy to become impatient, to start questioning whether God has forgotten you or to feel like nothing is happening. But my dear friends, this is where faith comes into play. You see, just because you don't see anything happening on the surface doesn't mean that God isn't working behind the scenes. Sometimes, God is moving in ways that are invisible to us, laying the foundation, setting things in motion, and aligning the right circumstances so that when the time comes, everything falls into place perfectly. Patience, in many ways, is about surrender. It's about letting go of our need to control the timeline and trusting that God's timing is always perfect. It's about finding peace in the waiting, knowing that God is never late, that He is always on time, and that He will not delay in fulfilling His promises to you. I want to share with you three encouraging verses that will help you in your journey of patience. These verses are like anchors for your soul, keeping you grounded and focused as you wait for God to open that door. The first verse is from the book of Isaiah 4031. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What a powerful reminder that waiting on God doesn't weaken us. It strengthens us. When you wait on the Lord, He renews your strength. He gives you the endurance to keep going, to keep trusting, to keep believing, even when the waiting seems long. Like an eagle, soaring high above the storms, God will lift you up and give you the strength to rise above your challenges. The second verse is found in Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart and wait for the Lord. This verse is a call to courage. It's a reminder that waiting requires strength, strength of heart and strength of spirit. It's easy to become discouraged when you're waiting, but this verse encourages us to take heart, to be brave, and to keep our hope alive. God sees your waiting, and He honors your patience. Keep your heart strong, because God is faithful, and He will come through for you. And the third verse is in Romans 8:25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This verse beautifully ties together hope and patience. It reminds us that patience is born out of hope. When you have hope in God's promises, when you believe in your heart that God is working for your good, it becomes easier to be patient. You're not just waiting. You're waiting with expectation, knowing that something good is on the horizon. My dear friends, as you navigate this season of waiting, let these verses be your guide. Let them encourage you to stay patient, to trust in God's timing, and to believe that the waiting is not in vain. God is preparing something beautiful for you, something that will exceed your expectations. But it requires patience. It requires you to trust Him completely and to rest in the knowledge that He is in control. Remember, Patience is not just about the ability to wait, but about how you wait. Wait with a heart full of hope. Wait with a spirit of trust. Wait with a confidence that God is faithful to fulfill His promises to you. My dear friends, I want you to understand something very crucial about the process of stepping into a new chapter. Sometimes, the path to that new door is filled with trials and tests. You might be wondering why things seem to get harder. Just when you're on the brink of a breakthrough. But let me assure you, these challenges are not meant to break you. They are meant to build you up. They are shaping you, preparing you, and equipping you for what lies ahead. Think about it like this. Before a door can be opened, sometimes you need to pass through a hallway. That hallway might be dark, narrow, and uncomfortable. It might seem endless, and you might even feel like turning back. But the hallway is part of the journey. It's where you learn, where you grow, and where you develop the strength and the character you'll need for the new chapter God is leading you into. So, what do you do when you find yourself in that hallway? How do you keep moving forward when the path seems uncertain and the challenges seem overwhelming? First and foremost, you need to hold on to hope. Hope is what keeps you going when everything else tells you to give up. Hope is what reminds you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that there is a door waiting for you, even if you can't see it yet. Hope is not just wishful thinking. Hope is a deep, unshakable belief that God is in control, that He is guiding your steps, and that He has a plan for your life. It's the anchor that holds you steady when the storms of life are raging around you. And it's what gives you the courage to keep pressing on, even when the journey is tough. But hope alone is not enough. Along with hope, you need faith. Faith is what gives you the strength to take that next step, even when you don't know where it will lead. 
Faith is what helps you to trust in God's promises. Even when everything around you seems to be falling apart, faith is what keeps you moving forward. One step at a time until you finally reach that new door. And let's not forget about perseverance. Perseverance is the ability to keep going, to keep pushing forward even when the road is hard and the obstacles seem insurmountable. It's the determination to stay the course, to keep your eyes on the prize, even when the journey is long and difficult. Perseverance is what separates those who reach the new chapter from those who give up too soon. My dear friends, I want you to understand that the hallway you're in right now, the challenges you're facing, are not a sign that God has forgotten you. They are a sign that He is preparing you for something greater. He is strengthening you, refining you, and making you ready for the blessings that are waiting on the other side of that door. So, how do you cultivate hope, faith, and perseverance in your life? It starts with prayer. Prayer is your direct line to God. It's how you communicate with Him, how you pour out your heart to Him, and how you receive His guidance and strength when you're feeling weary, when you're feeling discouraged, when you're not sure you can take another step. Go to God in prayer. Ask Him for the strength you need, for the faith to keep believing, and for the perseverance to keep moving forward. But prayer is not just about asking for help. It's also about listening. God speaks to us in the quiet moments, in the stillness of our hearts. He gives us the wisdom we need, the encouragement we seek, and the assurance that He is with us every step of the way. So take time to be still, to listen, and to allow God to speak into your life. Another way to build hope, faith, and perseverance is by surrounding yourself with people who will lift you up. We were not meant to walk this journey alone. We need each other. We need the support, the encouragement, and the love of others who can walk alongside us, who can pray with us, and who can remind us of God's promises. When we're struggling to believe, find a community of believers, whether it's in your church, among your friends, or even in your family, who will stand with you, who will encourage you, and who will help you keep moving forward. And finally, you need to keep your eyes on the goal. The goal is not just to get through the hallway. The goal is to step into the new chapter that God has prepared for you. That new chapter is not just a continuation of what has been. It's something entirely new, something better, something that will bring you closer to the purpose that God has for your life. My dear friends, the hallway might be long, and it might be difficult, but it will not last forever. The door will open, the new chapter will begin, and when it does, you will look back and see that every challenge, every trust was worth it. You will see how God used those moments to shape you, to prepare you, and to bring you to a place of greater blessing and fulfillment. Now, let us conclude this message with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your unending love, your faithfulness, and the promise that you are always with us. Lord, we trust in your perfect timing and your divine plan for our lives. Even when the journey seems long and the path is unclear, we hold on to the assurance that you are guiding us every step of the way. Father, we ask for your help in cultivating patience within us. We know that waiting is not always easy, and it can be difficult to remain hopeful when we cannot see the results of our efforts. Please renew our strength as we wait on you. Fill us with the courage to remain steadfast, the hope to keep believing, and the peace to trust in your timing. Help us to remember that every moment of waiting is a moment of preparation for something greater that you have in store for us. Lord, 
we also lift up our prayers for restoration. We ask you to heal the brokenness in our lives, whether it's in our relationships, our hearts, or our circumstances. Bring restoration to what has been lost, damaged or broken. Restore joy where there has been sorrow, peace where there has been unrest, and strength where there has been weakness. Let your healing touch mend what needs to be healed and bring new life to what seems beyond repair. We bring before you our financial concerns as well. You are our provider and we place our trust in you for our needs. We ask you to open doors of opportunity to bring financial breakthroughs and to guide us in managing our resources wisely. Help us to rely on your provision and to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. May your hand be upon our finances and may we see your miraculous work in our financial situations. Lord, we also pray for healing. You are the great physician, and we trust in your power to heal our bodies, minds, and spirits. Whether we are dealing with physical ailments, emotional struggles, or spiritual wounds, we ask for your healing touch. Let your presence bring comfort, strength, and restoration to those who are suffering. May your grace flow through every area of our lives, bringing wholeness and well-being. Father, as we wait for your promises to unfold, help us to remain anchored in hope, faith, and patience. Let us find joy in the journey, knowing that you are with us, working behind the scenes and preparing us for the blessings to come. We trust in your plan and believe that you will open doors to new chapters in our lives, filled with your grace, love, and favor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.